<laughs> Welcome back. He's back. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> In the flesh. I was commenting earlier. It feels like podcasting feels weird. Did you see how did the same thing? That was a little, it's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> A little more tan. A little more tan. Yeah, I was at the beach, which I didn't send any produce pictures to our producer. Mm. And my guess is he might have some magic up his sleeve. I don't know. There, there's one that I hope he finds and puts up there. It's awesome. <laughs> Super cool. The monkey photo. The monkey photo. It's, yes. Yes. Well, monkey. welcome back. Yeah. Who did let me back? I was on vacation with the family. Went to Putacano. It was very fun. Great resort. Great service. Great property. Uh, it was good. Good time. It's good time to be away. And you did um, a little back snorkeling excursion, right? A little swim with the sharks, swim with the stingrays. The, I've, I've done the stingrays where you like got to hold a stingray, but the sharks, I've never, never swam with the sharks. So that's how oh, there it is right there. That, that wasn't the one I was thinking of though. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know which old ones I put on there, but, <laughs> but there it is. There it is. With the monkey on your head. Very cool. That may or may not be a man with a monkey on his head who had about six or seven gym tonics <laughs> by that point. Just going to say. May or may not. So. It definitely was, was, was that man. <laughs> oh, we well done. That, I mean, that's, that's the way you do Punta Gana, right? Or, yeah. or any Caribbean vacation. You, yeah. You just got to let loose. The resort was in the win column for food allocation per person with three of my family members. Mm -hmm. But they were definitely in the loss column on booze on my part. I see. I see. Yeah, I made up. <laughs> right, right. We 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 got our values. Well across done the, across the gamut. So, well done. Yeah. So anyway, we're supposed to do this banter thing. I think later, but we just did it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the, rusty, the, rusty podcast. I mean, yeah. We. I mean, we haven't done a podcast since you tried to put me in an emotional pretzel. Last. I mean, that's the last thing we did together. <laughs> Is that really that long ago? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like it's like the middle Seriously? of February, like the dead of winter. Yeah, that was the last one we did together. And we're still in the dead of winter. Yeah. yeah I, I'll have everybody watching know that this time last week, I was on a beach at 85 degrees. And this time this week, I'm here with you. And the phone says snow squall till 3.15. Right. So That's not cool. You know, welcome back. Jim. Let's go spring. I mean, yeah. baseball practice I know, starts like, this week. April is in view on the calendar. Let's go. No more power back. through. Anyway, why did you bring up? I, I know. I just like my check <laughs> bag was full. Sorry, Jacqueline. I mean, it looks so, like over our shoulder that there's sun in the window, but it's a lot. It doesn't help the, uh, the 30 degrees. It's a little lot. It is. Anyway, thanks for watching Lancaster Connects. This is the show about small business success, small charities here on Lancaster doing good. Uh, it's about the battle on Main Street, big versus small, David versus Goliath. And these two guys are happy to bring it to you. Uh, I don't know what move I just did there. It's like an island thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Island boy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna start singing the Adam Boy song? What, what, so, were there any uh, any like Dominican things that you picked up? Like, like, like that's more like an Aloha thing. Yeah. Are there any like mannerisms or? I mean, we were we really things? just stayed on the resort. Yeah. I mean, I bought some great cigars on the beach. That's that's not quite a Dominican thing. No, no. Great, really good Dominican cigar though. That's called a matter. Great, great cigar. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Pick yep. up the cigars. Yep. Uh, very good. Which I'll just say right now, I had the opportunity to, you know, one of our things is one of our core values here is integrity is what you do when no one's looking, right? So I had the opportunity, Lancaster, to buy the Dominican cigars, which is what's pictured, which is what I bought, or to buy the Cohibas, which are Cuban. But the rule is you're not allowed to bring Cuban cigars back in. And I know there's way, right. I followed it. I, you know, but I get to U.S. Customs and, and the agent just says, you got anything to declare? Alcohol, <laughs> tobacco, firearms, or just box of cigars. Okay. And he wastes me through. Doesn't check them, nothing. So I could have had the Cubans and they were a good price. Uh, but but that's a bummer. But I'm, I'm glad you followed the rules because your luck, you would not have. And I, I'd still I, be I, down in Customs. Yeah, right. <laughs> Customs, I had to, like my one phone call would have been to Ben. Hey, you're doing out of the show by yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, but yes, um, we're still doing our banter and we're, that still should be later. So why don't we uh, just kind of wrap this joke? Go, up here. go for it. We do prizes for the show. Jacqueline already commented in. That's how you get in. $25 restaurant gift card to a local restaurant. Uh, comment, share, 
love the show, hit that love reaction. It helps us out with the algorithm. By now, you all know what an algorithm is on social media. It's this wild thing that you don't know, really know about, but you know it helps. And hitting the, hitting the love reaction, smashing that love button helps us out. So we'd love for you to do that. You can catch us also on YouTube, on Facebook, on a number of channels. We're like everywhere, even on your smart TV. If you search Lancaster Connects, we'll come up through one of those players. One of them. One of them. Yep. And we got a fantastic guest today. Right. Uh, we will bring him on now. Dr. Keith Floyd from the Envision Group. He's told us to call him Keith, not Dr. Keith. Keith, welcome to the show. Hi, gentlemen. Hi, Walk. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the uh, invite. Yeah. Pleasure. Well, first, tell us what the Envision Group is all about. Sure. Um, Envision Group is a leadership consultancy. Uh, we focus on the area of leadership and helping to grow and develop leaders uh, in all stages in their leadership journey. And uh, it's actually the firm that I actually founded myself. So uh, it's uh, my baby, so to speak. And you, you have a pretty unique story about how you started Envision Group. Why don't you bring us up to speed? You can start, start from the very beginning and bring us sure. into today. Sure. Glad to. Um, so a little background is, you know, my, the firm, I founded the firm on December 26th of 2013. So prior to finding the firm, uh, I worked in education and academia for about 25 years. Uh, but take a step back before that story is, you know, growing up as a kid, we, we didn't really have a lot. So my parents instilled in us a pretty strong work ethic saying, if you want something, you got to work for it. You got to go out and earn it and do all that. So I was like the really short kid uh, who was pushing a lawnmower up and down the street to mow lawns when I was a kid and paper route and all this. So fast forward my education career, uh, which I enjoyed immensely. It was a great uh, opportunity to work in the community. Uh, and at the same time, though, that entrepreneurial itch was always there. So December 26, 2013, normally sleep like a baby. I couldn't sleep. Um, got up, came downstairs, was in the office, working a little bit, kept feeling that entrepreneurial itch in that voice in the back of my head. Um, finally, then I grabbed a tablet, a pen, a glass of wine, went in the living room and sat down and two and a half hours later and five pages of scribble, I'd birthed my firm and Envision Group began to exist. Day after Christmas. Day after Christmas. Yeah. So I don't know the significance of that. It just, I don't know. I guess it was just. That was, that's where it finally all came to be. Yeah. Well, you would have been on a break as a teacher then, right? Uh, I was an administrator at the time. We were actually on a break. Uh, yeah. So, and, and we just had a big, you know, Christmas with all the kids in town and all of that. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was probably just like the perfect, perfect opportunity for it to all come together. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I read, I just read on the airplane hall, a um, fantastic book on leadership called uh, Powerful by Patty McCord. She was hey. a founding member of Netflix and was, yeah. if you're in business and business leadership, have you seen the Netflix slide deck? That uh, 15 slides, I guess, it's got like tens of millions of views. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she was, this was her thing, right? And right. she was a big part of Netflix growth from back, you know, I mean, I guess we might have viewers watching our show today that don't understand that Netflix used to mail you DVDs, these little CD looking things. Sure. Yep. We might have viewers that just didn't know that. Uh, but yes. So she Absolutely. was with Netflix from that start to, oh my gosh, we're growing like crazy and we have to have DVDs in the queue and we need to manage, create that technology to streaming, to the realization that they took a third of all bandwidth on the internet at one point. Uh, you know, so really, uh, uh, she's seen tremendous growth. And I, so reading this book on leadership was, was very interesting in the way that she communicates. So like for you, I'll ask you this question. What's, I'm going right off script. Like Ben prepared this script. <laughs> like, I don't care. That's okay. It's I good. went off script with my first question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just like, we're just doing this. We're doing this show. <laughs> Shake well, and if off. I can interject real quick, yeah. quick backstory too, if you don't know about Netflix, for those people who don't know, is they actually offered themselves for sale to Blockbuster yep. for $50 million and Blockbuster laughed them out of the room. And fast forward to today, yep. Blockbuster should have made that deal. 
Yeah. Now there's yeah. like one little blockbuster store that's yeah, like right. just standing yeah. open for nostalgia purposes. Which is a, a yeah. documentary probably on Netflix. <laughs> right. Yeah, more, more about Netflix than the state of yeah, one book. Exactly. So anyway, so, uh, okay. so in the book, she really talks about the power of proper communication, the power of proper leadership, really understanding your your role as a so for you, I mean, when you work with leaders, what's one of the biggest things that you see where leaders are deficient or could improve upon? Like, where are they struggling? Sure. Well, I think what happens a lot of time, um, and, it, and candidly, and it's a perfect setup. Thank you for that for that question, Jeff. Um, one of the very first things I work with in all leaders is to, for them to help understand themselves, who they are as people, who they are as a leader. You know, how do they think? How do they act? How do they pick? Um, how do they engage with other folks? Because candidly, a lot of times in leadership, um, that's one of the things they don't take time to reflect upon. And once they do that, it, it also gives them a lens to see how they engage with, interact with other people, especially those around them. Unfortunately, what happens so many, many times, and it's part of human nature, is we tend to think that everybody in the world sees the world through the same lens we do. But obviously we know that not everybody does. So that's probably one of the very first things that I work with folks on is just helping them to understand themselves. Uh, there's some key tenets that I really work with, you know, the idea of building trust and sustaining that. And as you said, communication is key. Um, if, if they can't communicate effectively, uh, if they can't engage effectively, uh, they're not going to, to be able to move forward. Um, or unfortunately, they're going to make a lot of pitfalls along the way that will probably uh, somewhere can be very challenging to come back from. Yeah. What type of businesses do you work with? Is there a particular segment of the business community that you um, focus on or um, small businesses, large businesses? Give us a little insight at uh, who you work with. Um, it, candidly, it varies. Uh, I work with both. Uh, I, I work with startup companies as well, just individuals who hey, have an idea. Uh, Keith, I told that you had an idea and you, you turn it into a, to a business. Um, all the way up through, I have a longstanding client of mine is a national firm that has all the coast to coast. Um, but I would say that even though I work with a variety of different industries, um, I kind of have what I call my core four and that's all in the professional services industry, uh, attorneys, accountants, engineers, and those in the financial industry. Um, and, and I always, say this, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I will, but, you know, I, I people ask, well, was that purposeful? And I said, well, I, I wish I could say it was, but it was one of those things that as I was engaging in the early days of my firm and having conversations, I found that those four industries in the professional services industry, really, um, there was a, a need uh, that, that my firm could offer. And that is many, many times in, in those industries, you know, they come out of school, they're highly skilled, highly trained, highly educated. Uh, they'll go into their industries, they'll work really hard, they'll have some success. The next thing they get promoted, you know, up the up the leadership pathway uh, without really any preparation for that. And then they find themselves not just managing a project or, you know, managing a book of business or whatever the case may be. Now they have to manage people and they have to lead people. And uh, so it's allowed me and allowed my firm an opportunity to, to, to really help those individuals. Yep. You... Um... You mentioned uh, that you cut grass and had a paper route. I think, I think for youth, especially today, but I think there's a commonality for people who are successful in business that have done those jo those jobs, those roles, right? Those hustles, um, door to door selling is another one. Um, yeah. Uh, do you see? Do you do you agree with that? Do you see a lot of like to me, I think there's immense value in as a, from a young age, kind of earning your way. There's mm -hmm. always a commonality you touched on. We didn't have a lot, but we had a great family that taught us this, this, and this, right? I find Absolutely. an awful lot of leaders that share that as a common thread along with the hustle thread. Um, where do you see the value in that? Like, do you, you see value in that? You see, should we be doing more of it at a young age with kids? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think there is a lot of value in that. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we get to do is, is you know, we, we get to make our path, but at the same time, if we're, if we're making our path and we're hungry at the same time, 
um, it, it tends to give you that inner fuel uh, that, that keeps you going. Um, I, you know, I, I always tell folks that, you know, and, and even clients and even just colleagues and friends, you know, if, if you have a, if you have a desire for something, um, I have actually the sign in my, my office here it says it's a beautiful thing when your passion and your uh, advocation come together. You know, it's just one of those things. If you can, if you can be hungry, if you can just let people know that, you know, it's, I think the biggest thing, and I'll kind of take a sidebar here, I think the biggest thing it comes down to fear. You know, a lot of times for folks, it's just, they're afraid. You know, they may have a great idea. They may have a, a dream that they want to see happen. And uh, the, the idea of fear that, that stops them as opposed to just saying, you know what, take a step off the cliff. Um, you might fall, but you never know. You might be surprised and feel like one of those little Warner Brothers cartoons. You just float up there in space for a minute until you get your footing and then you take the next step. Yep. One after the other. Yeah. What type of pitfalls are you helping businesses and, and leaders um, avoid? Uh, you know, like why, why are these services that you're offering so important uh, for a business and for a leader? Well, I think one of the pitfalls I kind of mentioned to already is that, you know, when you're seeing the world through a singular lens and you're not taking a chance to step back and, you know, I see this issue or this problem, this circumstance this way, you know, Ben, you're going to see it this way. Jeff, you're going to see it this way. We make the, we make the mistake. I think a lot of times is we think all three of us see it the same way. And each of us has a skill set that we can bring to this situation. We have our own set of strengths we can bring to the situation. We have the only way we think about it, um, the way we respond to it. So I think that's one piece. The other one, too, is, as you mentioned already, just being able to communicate, have a conversation, uh, understand that, you know, as a leader, your biggest role is to help facilitate, is to help guide, uh, to be able to provide guidance. Uh, to be able to bring people together, you know, in a cohesive manner is another piece of that. Um, and then I think finally the piece too is for a lot of industries, you know, we get siloed into a, a, a mindset that, that puts us on a path, you know, and if I could jump back to what I just said a moment ago, you know, at the time Blockbuster was one of the largest corporations in the world and they had the corner on so many different things, but they had a mindset that was limited. And they didn't take the opportunity to see another opportunity or potential. So their, their inability to innovate, and this is not to be a, a, you know, dipping on, on Blockbuster, but their inability to innovate didn't allow them to then look ahead. And, and I'd say probably the final piece, um, is to go into a piece or whatever work you're working on a project. Um, if it's a personal journey, if it's a corporate journey. Um, to go with the idea of succeeding on purpose versus letting it happen by happenstance. That's one of the things I talk about all the time with my clients is that um, success is something that you can plan for. You know, if you leave, if you leave it to happenstance, you might get it, but then you might not. Um, so yeah. that was a very long answer to a very short question. So no, it's, no, it's good. I mean, people tune in for our little jokey stuff at the beginning, but then they want to hear from you. They want to hear from our wow. guests, right? We have, what, we have one of your fans, John Ayers Middleton. He said, you're a great guest. So that Keith Floyd oh, is the man. You. That's what John says. So there you go. <laughs> thank John. We got back Abigail you, John. tuning in. We got Jonna tuning in. Uh, so prize later is going to be prize for a while. Gonna be spinning. That's good. Yep. It's going to be for a while. There you go. Uh, so you had said something. I was going to comment on it. Um, oh, about success being happenstance. Yeah, I'm a big believer in it being in being very intentional about success. So as we, we always try to focus like on our backyard here in Lancaster County. So is there, to me, I see something special about the entrepreneurial spirit, the journey here in Lancaster, right? So, because I, I mean, like I live in Sinking Spring. Like, I don't think, I don't think I've hidden that here on the show. I don't think that's, earth shattering news, certainly not going to upset the news cycle today of the Will Smith, Chris Rock debacle. <laughs> but, but, yes, Jeff lives in Sinking Spring. So I've seen, I've seen in my 25 years, really kind of traversing back and forth between Lancaster and Berkshire. Sure. I've kind of seen the, the, those two cities flip 
Right. Kim says, thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Right. Like that's a bad thing. <laughs> it, it depends on you. Guys. Anyway, um, I've seen those two cities like kind of flip flop. Yeah. Um, so like, what do you see here kind of in Lancaster about the entrepreneurial journey, the spirit, the drive, that intentional success? Uh, what do you see as a basis for that success here in Lancaster? Well, I think it's something that, um, and again, it's not unique, but I think it's very special here. And and that Lancaster has a set, uh, has a compass, like uh, what I feel is a very strong moral and ethical compass that helps guide. You know, if, if we're doing things on purpose and we're doing things purposefully, or purposeful way, I should say, um, in that manner, I, I think, in, in you know, I have a, I have a client of mine in, in one of the conversations we had one time, um, their business, they summed it up when they were having a, a leadership meeting that, you know, we'll go out of business to do the right thing. And, and I think that's a, a, another mindset that I think is alive and well here in, in Lancaster and, and in Pennsylvania. And I think really, it's, I think a lot of ways, you know, it's, it's what has guided so many businesses and industries. Um, you know, unfortunately, there are the flip side of that, but I think for a lot, if you just go into it saying that, you know, we're going to do the right thing. And if we do right by people, people will do right by us. And, um, you know, some of those old, you know, my, my late mother would say, you know, the golden rule and all those things, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth in that is that if, if you treat people with respect and if you be honest with them and you help them, um, it, it comes back. And I think yep. that's the, the beauty of, of the entrepreneurial journey. I think that's the beauty of this community. You know, they're just good people, you know? Yep. Um, I had a boss years ago. He said, you know, life is pretty simple. He said, you go, you have one rule to follow. And if you follow it, he goes, life will be very easy. And I said, what's that? He goes, just be nice. You're just nice. He goes, it's, it'll come back. And, and I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, I would agree hundred percent. I would add to it. Be nice without the uh, intention that anything comes back in return. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Just be nice and it'll, it'll come if it, it's meant to. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, it's just thinking about, you know, that, that what you were sharing is, is really the, the, the core of, of how and why Gardner's was founded 31 years ago by, uh, Jim Gardner and, and of course, uh, instilled in us. And, and when we took over 12 years ago now, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's 12, 12. Yeah. <laughs> 12 years, there you go. yeah, 12 years. Um, yeah, but it, 12 it, it, year, yeah. it remains the, the core of, of who we are and, and what we do here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's um, you know, it's not any surprise that that's why, you know, businesses succeed uh, having that, that sort of Absolutely. mentality. Uh, you have, uh, we had your website up earlier. Um, producer Chris mm -hmm. had that in the background. Um, you have a lot of uh, information and, and uh, education on your website. Maybe you could talk about some of the things that, uh, some of the resources that you have on, on your website. Um, sure. I'd be glad to, uh, you know, one of the things that I tried to do and then I, you know, want to give a shout out, uh, to, to Rota marketing. They helped me with my website and, uh, to Kelly Johnson who did all my photography and that, um, they, they were great in helping me craft that and curate it. And in the, in the website, you know, one of the things they helped me to do is to put up some videos um, it, the video that's up right there right now is something that I just did in house. It was started the pandemic. Um, I, when the world stopped, uh, a lot of my work had changed. So quickly had to remodel my home office a bit and create an in-home studio, um, which is still in effect today. Um, at the same time, then, you know, other resources that are on there. Um, I'm a big book guy. I love books. So there's a short reading list on there. Um, one of the things that I do offer is uh, I, I created something back in 2017 called a Thought for Thursday. Um, it's an email blast. It's a social media post. And uh, just just random thoughts that I have throughout the week. Uh, things that hit me, things that resonate with me. I'll usually put those into a thought. And the Thought for Thursdays are or one that are out there that, that you can even sign up for on the website if you want. Um, hopefully they give a little bit of, uh, you know, get a little bit of interest to give you some, you know, meant to give you some pause, give you some 
for flexing, uh, and maybe do some learning along the way. Cause you know, my background in education and, and as the title for today is just, you know, it's all about, you know, learning and becoming the next best version of ourselves. And hopefully that can be a part of that as well. So, um, so yeah, so there's some, some books on there. Uh, I have a blog, uh, got a white paper. I did one a little while ago on creativity on ways to think about and look at creativity a little differently. So just a smattering of what's, what's on there. Very good. Uh, question for you on the charity side, mm-hmm. which, mm-hmm. so maybe a two, two parter question. Okay. Again, going off script here. Sorry. I'm the off script okay. guy. He's the script guy. Um, so which charities do you like the most here in, in the area? Maybe that you support or you're big fans of the work they do. And then two, what other businesses are you seeing that are really like kind of supporting the community that supports that? Like they're, they're really mm-hmm. throwing themselves into charity. Sure. Well, there are so many great charities uh, here in Lancaster County and beyond. Um, you know, a couple of that, that come right top of mind, um, you know, I'm very with my background in education, I, I love the Power Packs program. If you're familiar with that. We've had Brad uh, on the show. A, yep. Yeah. I think that's right. He was one of the past guests. Um, you know, the ability to, to help, um, you know, the families and, and kids that are, you know, food, that have food insecurity to help them. Um, I mean, that, that's near and dear. Uh, another one that's near and dear to my heart, um, unfortunately, is background history in my family of, of cancer. So the American Cancer Society and hospice is just the tremendous people, what they do. Um, and another one, too, is that uh, over the years it's supported is uh, the long home uh, and uh, the work that they do. Um, that's something that I've been a part of a couple of their uh, gala events over the years. And um, it's a great, great great organization. So those are just a few off the top of my head. I'm not familiar with the blog home. What do they do? Yeah. So I, I will probably not do justice by giving the quick background, but I'll do my best. So the, the long home was established um, back over a hundred years ago and it created initially, I believe the, the impetus was for a lot of uh, women uh, that uh, maybe their spouse had passed away and didn't have the, the, the wherewithal for them to be able to support them. So it's created affordable housing for those folks, but it's not just that, it's involved. Um, you know, life is a journey and sometimes things happen that we don't plan on, especially later in life. And uh, it's just one of the uh, organizations that has um, has done a lot of good. And there's some great stories yeah. and uh, they're just not too far down the road. So. Again, I, they would be a great guest to bring on. I think too, at some point. Um, again, I want to do. I want to. I don't want to be an injustice to, to their background, but that's just yeah. Quick, yeah, certainly you know, sounds like seven. somebody we need to have on. So if you have a maybe yeah. after the show, if you can make an intro, that'd be great. If you if, yeah. if you're near and dear to them, and they, uh, we'd love to have them. On. That's what this show is all about, right? Like, absolutely, we believe that we support the community that supports us, and these conversations help support the community because we can introduce our listeners to guests like you just shared. And you said long, L-O-N-G, right? Yeah. L-O-N-G, long home, yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I learned this week on vacation I need to go have my hearing checked. So, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I do. I actually do, seriously. So it was Well, this, and I probably need to articulate a little you bit better, you know. It, was it's this it's, an early, it's a Monday. It's a Monday, and yes, it's, it's yeah, it's, uh, no, I have this problem hearing where like in an open air environment where there's like a lot of background noise and machines at HVAC going, I can't hear the person right in front of me. Mm, I, I'm very much. So it, but like the noise in the background becomes prevalent. It, it's odd. So I have to go, I have to go check, check it out. But you're not the doctor to help me with that. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I am not. I am not. Played one on TV once. No, just kidding. Okay. Keith, uh, uh, you don't have to name names or uh, anything if you don't like, but what um, no, can we you name sh- names here? <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, uh, can you share some success stories, um, some scenarios that, that you've become involved with that you sure. helped with? Uh, sure. You know, I, um, I, I mean, I've worked over the, you know, over the years, I've worked with a number of different individuals, uh, some coaching. Uh, it's, uh, one of the four prongs of, of my firm, uh, the coaching, the training, uh, the planning, and then an analytics piece. But 
couple of private bigger success stories I would say is that in the in the training and professional development, um, I mentioned a moment ago that I work with a national firm. Uh, it has offices across the U.S. Uh, I'll actually be doing another engagement with them coming up here midweek. Um, they're bringing folks in from all over the country. And I've done, this is my third year-long engagement uh, in leadership development with them. And over the course of the time, um, in the recent years, three of their more recent senior vice presidents within the firm have come out of the programs that we've done together. So I've been honored by that. I do that in concert with another colleague of mine who's a consultant based out of Canada. And another I just recently came aware of, too, is that I, I'm doing another year-long engagement with another firm, a uh, regional firm, and I've, this will be my fourth leadership development engagement with them. And a uh, recent statistic is they, they, are, they are a firm that's been around for a while, and within the last five years, that I believe that all of 90% of their current leadership of practice group leaders um, have been through my programs or been through Envision Group's work over uh, the last five years. So I, I think that's, and again, that's a testament I'd say to, to the individuals. I just, I'm just honored to, to share my thoughts with them and to share uh, some insights with them, but they do the hard work and do the heavy lifting um, so that, you know, to, to hear that 90% of their leadership has been through one of the programs I've done over the years. Um, that was a, that was very humbling and I, I was yeah. honored by that. So. Well, to that, I like to say well-earned, right? Um, Thank you. Because to me, like deserved is an entitlement word, right? That's my belief. So yeah. I, I don't say well-deserved yeah. because I think when people put the work in, they earned it. So I always, Absolutely. oftentimes you'll catch me on social media typing, you know, uppercase W of well, period, uppercase E <laughs> earned, period, because it was earned. It wasn't, you didn't deserve it. Yeah. So congratulations. Um, yeah. Steve commented uh, about the value of having a coach. I think just let's touch on this for a minute because sure, I think people look at the coaching industry or people look on the outside looking and they kind of look at it quizzically. They're not sure what it's about, what it's there for. Uh, we've employed various coaches over the years in our business and are part of various groups <laughs> to help further ourselves, myself, the company. Um, sure. But like for me, coaching is about really, it's a, the, the biggest thing I need out of it is accountability. Like I need, I need to know that every so often somebody's going to be checking in to say, Jeff, you know, on our last call, you said this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, cause my problem as a business owner is I've got, sorry, I just adjusted in my seat. My, my, so are, my knees are killing me. I'm <laughs> having a hard time sitting in this chair today. But to the point as a business owner, my mind's all over the place, right? And uh, yeah. I can't even finish the question without going squirrel. <laughs> so, so a it's all good. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, so a coach, especially in the business, really, uh, to me, the measure of a good coach is that accountability aspect. Right. Um, but for those looking in, I mean, what is the power of having a coach in your corner? Sure. And and I appreciate Steve's comment as well. And, and a shout out to Steve. I mean, Steve's a great guy and, and does great work uh, as well. Um, you know, I think the issue with, with coaching is for one, it's, it's for a lot of folks, it's, it's that unknown. You know, it, it, it can be a little bit, um, strange at the onset, you know, being able to open up and talk about things. But I said, you know, one of the pieces I tell all the time, and, and Ben, I think you've heard me say this even in our conversation. Um, you know, when you get to a point in leadership, I said a lot of times leadership is like playing whisper down the lane and you're always the last person in line. So where somebody can turn to the person next to them and ask them a question or ask for a conversation, sometimes in leadership, you end up being, well, you're, you're the end of the line. So having that opportunity to turn to someone and have a conversation uh, like a coach, uh, to be able to say, hey, here's something I'm thinking about. Um, what, what do you think? Uh, and, and a big part of my coaching practice is very syncretic. Um, one of the things I like to say as well is that, you know, for instance, I'll take you two gentlemen. Um, you know, you know your industry so well. Yours is not an industry I'm familiar with. But I also believe that any person who's had a problem or a challenge before them, you have the answer inside of you to that problem or that solution inside of you. You just haven't asked yourself the right question to allow that solution to come to the surface. Whereas I think a good coach is that person who can ask the right questions 
at the right time to allow you to find a solution that you may not have explored before. Um, and then again, have that confidence too, just to, just to be able to say, you know, you know, I need some help with this. Uh, I've, I've given this example in the past and, and I share this with my coaching clients, it, you know, they have access to me as needed. And, and a couple of times, I remember one just a few months ago, I had a client of mine who texted me on quarter 10 on a Friday night and said, Hey, do you have a few minutes? <clears throat> well, I texted back, said, sure, give me a few. And for about 45 minutes from 10 to 10, 45, we're on the phone because there was an issue that had risen in the business with, uh, and I won't go into detail, obviously, but they needed some advice prior to Monday morning at 8 a.m. And we chatted about it. It's just, just, and again, I just asked a lot of questions and allowed them to kind of um, sift through. Because unfortunately, as you said, Jeff, you know, as a business owner, there's so much going on. And a lot of times it's being able to sift through all that other noise that's there to really get down to what, what's really the root of this and, and then what's the best uh, pathway or pathways. There could be multiple. And I think that's really where a coach can come in and, and help people is just to be able to, one, they have to listen intently and listen to not only what's being said, but many times what's not being said. Uh, and then being able to use that information and use that insight uh, to, to then dig a little bit deeper um, and then to help the individual again find those answers that are inside them that they just haven't come across yet. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree 100% with what you, with what you shared there. Um, it kind of reminds me, like you, asking, asking the right questions, finding the right answers uh, reminds me of the story of Beowulf. Uh, mm-hmm. As an educator, I'm sure you're familiar, or former educator, I'm sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with the story, right? To me, yeah. The story of Beowulf is very appropriate to business in business leadership yeah. because until you get to the root cause of the problem, uh, Beowulf's mother is going to come out from the swamp and keep, keep crushing you is mm-hmm. right. Basically what's going to happen. You got to go yeah. down to the bottom of the swamp, find the right object, the right tool in Beowulf's case, the, the sword and slay right. Grendel until that happens. Uh, well, Grendel was the, the, the offspring of the mother. Um, Slate Grendel's mother. Until that happens, yep. until you get to the root of the it, problem, and and that's where a coach really comes in. Um, it can really truly help. Uh, so it's really cool work that you're doing there. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, listeners, um, how can someone get started with you and the Advision Group? Um, easiest thing to do is just to to go to the website. Um, there, all my contact information is there on the website. Uh, in addition, that there is, and I, I probably should mention this as well, is one of the things that I offer in all of the four lines of the firm, the coaching, the training, the planning, and the analytics, is I offer a complimentary, what I call an exploration session. Uh, the exploration session is an opportunity for me and for the individual who's interested in having a conversation uh, to, to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, There's buttons activated on my website that they can go and just either email me directly or you can call me. Um, Either one is fine. And uh, we could set up an exploration session. And and, and one of the things I like to say too is that, you know, my hope is that I could be a good fit for for you. But again, you, it may not be. And there may be someone as well. And I have a lot of colleagues within my network. And that has happened as well where, um, you know, I can be able to help them find, uh, I can be a conduit for that as well. Um, you know, we're all here to, to, to hopefully better ourselves and be the, the next best version of ourselves. And if I can have the honor to do that, that's great. So people can contact me. And if not, maybe I can help you find uh, the person that would be the great fit. Um, you know, cause it's, it's all about working together. It's all about, you know, doing, you know, leaving this world better than, than we found it or uh, helping others along the way. Yep. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing personally, I mean, we have a lot of folks that listen to our show. So even mm-hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if you're not a business owner, if you're somebody right. who works for somebody, I mean, what Keith shared here today, I hope was informative to you, but to put a little bow yeah. on our time together, I, I think the challenge that I've given myself is to try to be 1% better each day, you know, yeah. and, and that compounding effect. So be happier in the morning when you get up, cost a little less. <laughs> um, you know make a better choice that was one. a hearty laugh there ben that was a hearty laugh yeah <laughs> it's it's improved yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
I remember one time I told Ben I wasn't going to cuss anymore, and I think he about spit his coffee. <laughs> but anyway, the lesson here, folks, getting back to, let me do my thing. Trying to be one percent better. You're degrading. Hey, Keith interrupted you, not me. <laughs> I, I I apologize. Yeah, that's I I will I will own that one. That was all me. But all me. Uh, but but for everybody listening, I mean, really, it it, it is that commitment of, of being one percent better. So if you hear anything from our show today, um, try to be that one percent better each day. Yeah. For yourself, Absolutely. you know, for your family, for your friends, for mm-hmm. your coworkers. If you run a business, lead a team. For those people, uh, it will come back around uh, in spades mm-hmm. to you in way more than 1%. Um, and again, I mean, one of our missions here is to help people wake up happy so they are more productive, so they are happy. Mm-hmm. And again, if it's that 1% that you just compound on each day, um, that's great. If you need help kicking yourself in the butt for that 1% each day, and you are that business owner, you are that business leader or that team leader that can get with Keith, please do. Because I'd be honored. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you'll. I'm sure you'll kick some butts and and get people in order as needed. Sure, in a very nice, kind, gentle manner. But yeah, right, right, right. the end result. Right, exactly. Yes. See, that's the touch you have. I just have like I'm gonna just click. <laughs> You're like pile driver. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna pile drive this. Into you. <laughs> yeah, it's just that's just what we're gonna. Do. But uh, but no, Keith, it was fun having you here on the show. Uh, oh, thank you. We had a good time together. Um, Keith, we're not done with Keith. We're not done with Keith. I know. I was sorry. He has the it was, script. That's okay. I, like I said, folks, I have I've been I was on a yeah, you know, I do my own podcast for my one of my own ventures that I have outside of this business. So I I'm a two a week podcast guy for a long time. But I didn't podcast at all last week. Yeah. So I feel out of it. Yeah. And I didn't podcast. I don't know, it would have been before. interesting to see a podcast from last week though, too, especially if there was uh brother, you know. I tried. I really did. <laughs> I was so stressed out. <clears throat> yeah, my laptop no, no, took, I, a, took a surge in the hotel, I guess, and just fried overnight. Because uh, oh. I, I did uh, everything right. Like I prepped the day before. I went through, tested mm-hmm. my connection. You know, the speed, everything was good. Little pro tip for you, by the way, if you're listening out there. Okay. Um, well, Keith is listening too, but everybody else. If you need, like, if you need wired internet in your hotel room, Unplug the Ethernet cord going into the back of your TV. Mm. Oh, pro tip. Yeah, did not know that. Yeah, your your you know your marquee hotels, your name brand hotels, all have yeah. like connected TV anymore. Well, it's all through a yeah. little modem beh- hidden behind your TV, and there's an Ethernet cord there, often long enough to stretch out to your laptop or device, and you get wired internet. You don't have to pay the Wi-Fi. So this little 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 trick there. Look at you. Yeah. You're gonna get an extra like extra line on your bill. That or like credit card and, 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 and you know, all <laughs> these well, well, places are gonna blacklist me, like Enterprise has <laughs> yeah. apparently. Yeah. And uh, I won't be able to bring it to room anymore. <laughs> but uh, for now, yeah. there's your tip of the day. And there you then, go. That's great tip. And Chris has a tip there, speedtest.net. I use that. Chris, I can locked in at 19 in the hotel when I did that, which is like four times what you need for what we're doing right. So anyway, well done. So that's enough of the off script session. We're back to the script. Keith, I know the answer to this, but our listeners do not. How okay. long have you lived in Lancaster? Tell us your Lancaster history there. My Lancaster, yeah. So I'm not originally from Lancaster. Uh, I came to Lancaster in 1986 to go to Millersville University. And uh, so started off in Millersville. And a little side story, because I know Ben, this is a connection as well. Um, uh, what ended up graduating with a music degree, uh, but actually, my actually started school was biology, nuclear medicine. That was oh, wow, yeah. it's a music so, biology music. Well, it, I always say it was the next M in the course catalog, so I went from <laughs> medicine to music. So, <laughs> so just, you good. know, That's if it hadn't worked out, you know, I don't know what would have come after music. I don't know, I have to think about that. Did you, uh, did you blow your food budget on sugar bowl bullies too? Um, I, yeah. I, I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, there are a lot of sugar bowl bowling in my life. There's, yeah. there's no other way to do it. That and Young Ones absolutely. took all my money. That, that It was gone. Yeah, oh yeah. It was gone. Oh, absolutely. So uh, we, we've got another Millersville listen, listener. I'll, I'll give a shout out to to, to, to Keisha. Uh, get the words out. Oh, uh, she's a, nice. a, she is um, giving a whoop whoop to, to Millersville yep. University. So, uh, and, and just a, a, a B question. Where did you come from 
to go to Millersville? Where, where's where's home for you? Um, uh, we have sport Pennsylvania, okay. all the little league baseball. There you go. Yep. 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 Great when your town's known for a group of twelve year olds to come and visit two, two weeks out of the year. But that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Very cool. Thank you. Hey, yeah. and second sure. question: uh, What is your favorite restaurant to go to? That's, that's a tough question because there are so many good restaurants in Lancaster. No, but hold, hold if I on. had the choice, the answer is it a tough question because you have three restaurant clients and you don't want to pick one of them? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a tough question just because I like to eat out a lot and I go to a lot of places. But I have to say, if if I had to pick my favorite restaurant, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Craig Tressler down at 551 West. Okay. Um, yeah, and we got and, some gift cards from them. You know, yeah. bid oh, to get yeah, away. It's, and I get it if you and I'm a I'm a pretty simple guy. You give me a good burger and a nice cold beer, and life is good. And his 551 West burger is is out of this world. Now, out what, of this world. What makes it out of the world? Out of this world? Like what? I mean, obviously, there's all kinds of things you can do to a burger, but what are they? What are they doing? What like what? It is, and it sounds odd, but trust me, you just got to go with it. It's it's a half pound burger with cheddar cheese and bacon, but then it's got jalapenos and peanut butter. And you would not think to put peanut butter on a burger, but it it is yeah. just phenomenal. You put a nice cold beer with it, and and some of the uh, truffle fries. Looks yeah, like, looks like the picture right there. How's their uh, yeah, their the garlic money pump fries? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk yeah, about the bear money. Burger, it sounds so strange, but it's so good. It's, it's outstanding. That 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 is interesting. I, I think it sounds like they are worth the trip just right there. I've like, never had peanut butter burger. Is that gluten free mm. peanut butter? The glu- uh, peanut butter is the the bun would not be okay. So you'll have to wrap yeah. it. Let's <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, sure. Last one. Uh, and it's another favorite question. Favorite Lancaster annual event that you go to or look forward to? Oh, man. That's a tough one, too. Um, you know, I've always enjoyed the concerts at Long Park. Um, okay. You know, I've always enjoyed those. You know, back in the day, and this is going to show my age, but I remember just, you know, the 4th of July concert that used to be back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, out there, especially the uh, with the Lancaster Symphony, and then you know, former uh, Mayor Smith all used to bring out his antique cannons and set those mm-hmm. off. I mean, that was always a highlight. Um, I think he still does. That. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, are we back? So, with you just scare my children every time the cannons went off. But you know, besides, they they did them last year. The concerts. so we're back. Yeah, awesome. We we, we yeah. There you go. yeah, there you go. Lancaster back. Awesome, yeah. free, awesome. free entertainment, great for families. I remember Absolutely. this would have been the first summer we moved here. So it was summer of 1990, I guess. I was born in Canada and moved here okay. when I was 10. And so the first summer we went to a Longs Park concert, but it was so full that we walked under the tunnel. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. From the, the tunnel still from the wall, yeah. Yep. yep, from the wall parking lot. It was so full. Like, we basically put our chairs down on the other side of the tunnel. It was that packed. Wow. Yeah. Because the oh, small crazy. from like kind of North Central Ontario, like these are all the people I've ever seen in my life in the spot. <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty wild. <laughs> What's all of this, eh? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's great. yeah, that's It's good to know they're back. It's good to know that you've enjoyed yeah. it. I think you've made a burger friend out of Amy. She's going to go to 551 and try that out. So, yeah, there we go. It's, Just it's, making connections. It's amazing. It's our connects. It's amazing. Peanut butter burger. Peanut Johnny, butter jalapeno. Like, you got to remember the jalapeno. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, yeah, like that, we, I like how we're back to the burger. I mean, the, the peanut butter yeah. is a twist, but like peanut butter and jalapenos and bacon. But the peanut, yeah, and cheddar. The peanut butter helps cut the jalapeno, so they're not they get the flavor, but you don't get the like the zap of it. That's the nice part. I want the zap. I want my tongue yeah. to like over <laughs> here. Yeah. Well, go see Craig. Craig's the man. He's he's the he's the owner and just a just an all around good sounds, guy. Uh, yeah. Sounds like I have to have a peanut butter in the fridge at the campsite this summer with the burgers. I'm Ooh, absolutely. Stay tuned, yeah. Lancaster Connects family. Camping season's coming around the corner, and we have a whole <laughs> season two menu being planned. We should we're going to add that. All we should plan an episode on a Monday from the campsite. 
with, with the burgers. We'll have to check right. speed. And, and oh yeah, yeah. I take pictures. Whoever can give the best peanut butter burger, you know, just have like a competition. It. There you go. I like it. There you go. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Keith, we'll call you Keith once. We'll talk, call you good Dr. Keith twice. Um, <laughs> this has been a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, uh, we've got a little bit more business to do on our end, but if you want, if you okay. want or need to take off, please do so. But uh, we right. really appreciate you being being on the show with us. Well, and I just want to say thank you, gentlemen, for having me. It's been it's been an honor, it's their uh, privilege, and it's been a lot of fun. And uh, so I just uh, appreciate the appreciate the opportunity. And uh, and I'm going to do a shout out to you guys, you know, for all that you do. And uh, everyone needs to come visit you there. So thank you, and thanks for being our guest. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, all right, see you here, guys. Yep. Good.